Hey, welcome to the Moral Marriage Podcast, guys. Today, I want to talk about something that, well, I think you really need to start getting a big clue on, and it's not that you don't care. I'm not coming in and controlling my home. And today, I want to talk about the seven types of sex. Uh, actually, in my course, I teach the six types. Um, I teach it like the wives don't like the last two. All you care about is sex. I'm Cass. And I'm Catherine. Welcome to the Moral Marriage Podcast, and I made a real and a post that pissed people off, and it was on You Can't Control Your Partner. Uh, today, I want to talk about your anchor in life. I wanted to talk today about the couch, i.e. you're sent to the couch or you go to the couch. That's a separation. I fucked up, and I'm going to tell you all about it. We're moral marriage. Let's flip divorce statistics with the new marriage. Hey, welcome to the Moral Marriage Podcast, guys. Today, I want to talk about something that... Well, I think you really need to start getting a big clue on, and it's not that you don't care. Now, where I'm going with this is really straightforward. When we start talking about being your best version, okay, I'm putting that loosely in quotes because recently we did an episode about you're always rising. Stop talking about being your best version. Yeah, that should go without saying. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, that's you right. need to be the best but version of yourself. I don't think anybody ever walks around going, yeah, I'm just going to be half myself today. I'm going to be a bit of a douche. <laughs> I mean, you you definitely probably, probably went should. through that phase. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, if you are, stop. Um, <laughs> but what happens when you start to rise is you're not affected so much by all that little stuff we talked oh, about before. Okay, I like this. And so you start to thank you. You start to present like it doesn't matter. You don't care because you're not taking it personally. You have to be careful and clear in your mind. Because however you present it will make your partner have a certain view, like you don't care. There's a caveat here. Oh, caveat? Caveat? We did this before. <laughs> caveat? <laughs> um, there's a caveat here. Caveat? <laughs> that, caveat? Um, I just can't figure out what sounds right to me. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. you could figure out what sounds right, or you could just say caveat. Caveat. <laughs> there's a caveat. Okay, so... The caveat is, based off your history, <laughs> your partner might not feel like they matter at all anyway, right? And so the problem is, as somebody rises up, they become valuable. If you understand that, it's because you know that relationships are value. It doesn't matter what relationship we're talking about, you're either valuable or you're not. You either have something to bring to the table or you don't. There is no, I'm sometimes valuable and sometimes I'm not. You can't be hot or cold because eventually you devalue yourself and you're not valuable anymore. So if it sometimes work for you, or if that's why things get good in your relationship and then bad, it's because you're not valuable or you're both not valuable, whichever. So you become super valuable and then you start giving. Give everything, everything that you want because you believe that's what a relationship is for. I'll say gratitude as an example right now. Thank her for everything. Thank him for everything, everything. You know, the paycheck, the thing that they did that you wanted to do, what they did for you. Right. Like I, I was just thinking about an example of one of the clients, uh, husband and wife, she had the homework. He brought it up. She got, then got upset because she wanted the opportunity. He took the opportunity from her. Hey man, I get it. You just wanted to get comfortable, get going. That's great. Good job. Whatever. We want to move forward. And you got what you wanted. Like, why are we fighting? Right. You ha he goes in there with an attitude of like, well, I don't care. Like I want to do this. It's not that he doesn't care about your feelings. It's that he needs to not be affected by the fact that you're hurting right now so you could be strong. I think this goes both ways. Yeah, it definitely does. I have an example. Yeah. So you remember the lovely knock out that you had earlier this year? Oh, my gosh. Way back in April. <clears throat> yeah, it was, yeah, it was way back in the yeah. spring. I think it was March. Um, and so that was probably the first knock out. This is when we coined it a knock out. You did. I yep. coined it. Right on air. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Right on air. On the, on the oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I yeah came up with that. So when he used to narc out before, it used to really upset me. And when he narked out this time, I did not shed a tear. I was as cool as a cucumber. And I was just like, he, he said he wanted a divorce. I took off my rings and I said, okay. I It's not that I didn't care. I was acting like I didn't care. It's just that I, I didn't have this outburst of emotion because I know where I am. And so in his narc out, if he's not going to come with me, well, I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm still going to stand strong. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same sort of thing. If um, I have an example, I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to out this person, but um, her husband 
said something to her with very little emotion. And she could not believe that he just said it with a straight face. Well, the reason he said it with a straight face is because he's ready to move forward. He's ready to take that next step. And he's just not going to have this outburst of emotion. He's, he said, it's very black and white. I'm going, if you're not coming, then you're not coming. And she could not believe that he acted with no emotion. Well, it's not because he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He did that because he has outgrown that person that he used to be. And he's not going to express it in the way that he used to express it. And this is where Cass said, you have to be very careful because based on your past, your, your partner could take it in any sort of way. Well, she took it as he doesn't love me. He doesn't care. Well, that's because he went from having, you know, a puke of emotions to just point blank stating what needed to happen mm -hmm. because he is going in that direction and she is now, but she wasn't <laughs> going. So it's not that, so that whole thing, it's not that you don't care. Mm -hmm. It's that you're expressing yourself in a different way. You're expressing yourself without the puke, the outburst of emotions and emotions are okay. You can show your emotions, but you can't puke them. You can't have outbursts of emotions. Well, you can sometimes, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally do. And guys, it's really important to understand. I, I love it when this comes out, stuff like this, like the narco that I had. We, just, so, just for those of you who don't know it yet, like, I'm not perfect. Catherine's not perfect. We all make mistakes. Well, mostly it's me. But, but, I'm but, not perfect. But the, the reason why it's important is because it doesn't affect me and the value I have for myself. In fact, it, to the point with our strength of where we're at, all, you did everything that happened the way she said. And then the next morning when we worked it all out, then the next thing you did was get two more courses to understand me more. Mm -hmm. Right? That's because that shows she's that I valuable. Do care, but and also, I do care. Yeah. And that she does care. Right? And in the moment that I'm having an episode and I'm in one of those lows and, and well, you know, like it, it, it just, it's easy to say I want a divorce because you're like, you don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be careful with my words because most of you aren't going to be to the level that I have to work through and manage in my head. That's fair to say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a straight jacket. <laughs> do they sell those on Amazon? It doesn't they happen very do. often, guys, but it was daily, if you can imagine. Daily, week long binges. Like, it so was really bad. It was bad back in the day. And now, whatever, I, I mean, that's the only one this year, I think. It was and a like minor, a minor one. one another time. But yeah. yeah. Um, most of you aren't going to be dealing with what I have to manage up here. Okay. But your emotions make you look like the same person. Maybe not as bad or to the extreme, okay? And all of that is what makes your partner think that you don't care when you start to gain control. Go back to listening to the episode about contempt, bitterness, and, and how you manage without that, how you know you're moving forward, because that's what she's describing, right? She is high value. She's not going to be derailed from that if I have a problem with my head. So okay. it's not that I don't care about what he's going through. Right. It's just that I'm not going to get down to that level. I'm going to manage my emotions and stay the course. I'm still going. And it's the same for him. So we talked about it going both ways. I can't remember what happened the last time we had a, an incident where it was my fault. I can't remember the details. But I do know that I was the one that was not emotionally in control. I wasn't having a narc out, but I wasn't being my empathetic self. I wasn't trying to see things from his perspective. I was ever, I was contemptuous and I was angry and, and he just didn't go down to my level. You know, he right. stayed calm and cool. And, and it's, it's almost scary when your partner is so cool and calm, when you are either having a knock out or you're having an emotional out, outburst, because that's what it feels like. It feels like your partner doesn't care because here you are an emotional wreck. And here he is just being just his normal, nice, assertive, firm self. Right. And so in those moments when you're the one that's having the outburst, whether it's the narc out or otherwise, the other person can appear to not care, but actually it's the opposite. They care a lot. They care enough to not get into the cycle of attack defend. They care enough to not go back to who they used to be and stay rising. That's right. Now that's an important last comment that we should talk about. They stay rising. Okay. Because obviously there's people that just shut down and they're not acting like they care or they throw out the jab or this and that. But that's not the person we're talking about. Today. No. We're talking about somebody who's growing and it's not that they don't care. It's in fact, exactly what she said. They absolutely care. They refuse right? to let you anchor them down. That's right. And if your partner is actually growing, good indications guys would be listening to a podcast like this, reading a lot, taking a course, hiring mentors would be a massive one, okay? 
not things like therapy. That's like an introductory first step. You might, that's kind of like reading a book. You know what I mean? Let's, if you're going to do read mine, disrupting divorce, uh, available newrockpress.com slash DD or on Amazon if you're not in the U S but why? Because I mean, in the book, I even talk about a bunch of resources in my course. I talk about even more resources, you know? And so like at least pick the right book if you're going to do it, but that's a good indication. If your partner's actually trying to grow, especially if they hire a mentor, right? Then it's not that they don't care. Mm -hmm. It's that you can't anchor them anymore. Yes, that's right. That's it. You're either going to start boosting or they will boost themselves. That's right. Right on might, out of there. And you might, get, yeah, and you might get offended by that, but yeah. really how can you be upset that somebody wants to move on if you're refusing to move on? If somebody wants to grow in general. You're not a people. That's what that, I mean. Move on yeah. from who they are or where they are. Not necessarily yeah. move on from you. Move out of the situation. Grow. Mm -hmm. Make progress. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, the amount of people that, that we hear about, especially the wives, because I'm speaking to so many more men, but the wives that are just not on board. What the heck are you doing? Like, you don't need a coach. What a way. I get it. I get it. You don't trust. You don't believe, you know. But to tell somebody that they can't grow or do better. That reminds me when I got back from Africa, this woman crying, mm -hmm. bawling outside. And I, I you know, uh, not babe, <laughs> babe, girl, is there anything <laughs> I can do for you? Somebody's going to die. <laughs> There's going to be a plane. I can't say that out loud. I think I stopped myself in time. Um, <laughs> um, I was like, whatever I said, I can't even remember, but like, girl, you all right? You know, something. And she just burst out even more. Yeah. And the gist of it was somebody on the plane told her, well, no, you're an alcoholic. So you'll never be. She's two weeks sober. Mm. Somebody on the plane told her she'll never, she'll be. never be sober. What an like you guys got to understand it's even closer to home. If it's you and your partner, if your partner is trying, you're denying yourself the opportunity. So don't look like they don't care. Don't look at it like that. Look at it. Like, why don't you care enough? Mm. We can end on that. See ya. Bye.